We're going to do a little bit here on thin walled pressure vessels. Now, both of these words, both of these, <laughs> all three of these words slash phrase thingies, they all mean something. So specifically, thin walled means that um, the radius over the thickness. So that's going to be the inner radius. Inner radius over the um, wall thickness, okay? So inner radius over the wall thickness, that's going to have to be greater than or equal to 10, generally. So the wall thickness, just think about like the thinner the wall is, then the greater this division-y thingy gets to be. So you want um, super, super thin walls and really, really, really fat um, pipes or pressure vessels. They're not really pipes, they're vessels. Um, if you really want to have a good time, um, you should look up the um, ASTM guides for um, pressure vessels. Super cool. Okay, so pressure. Um, when we talk about pressure, we're talking about the gauge pressure. Um, and the gauge pressure is the difference between the internal and the external pressure. Okay, so um, your gauge pressure is the difference between um, those two. So um, there are two different kinds of pressure vessels that you can look at. Um, there's cylindrical, Okay, I should make these prettier. Um, so I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it look all fancy. I mean, so I guess so. There's two types. They're cylindrical and they're spherical. And like, I guess you could make a pressure vessel that looks like an ice cream cone, but that would be kind of stupid, and it would just explode. So um, we like cylindrical. We like spherical. So even whenever you see a tank that looks like you know this, a lot of times it'll have inside it a tank that looks like that. And they just like have it like this on the bottom so it sits pretty. Um, so it'll actually, you, you might be able to see the top, but the bottom it might just look like it goes straight to the ground. But it's, it's usually not going to do that. Um, so even on um, uh, what we're calling cylindrical, um, cylindrical is usually going to have a, um, uh, what do you want to call it? It's going to have a, a hoop. Um, on the end holding it together like that makes sense um so this is going to be on the on the end caps okay so we're going to get into this talk about cylindrical vessels and pressures and stuff like this um and we're also assuming there's no external pressure so whatever our little um thing is doing we're not thinking about it as being underwater okay so that's that's like a super super big assumption um because otherwise we'd have to change a whole bunch of stuff so this is just going to be like pressure vessels, like sitting out in a cornfield doing like little pressure vessel stuff. Okay, so yes. Um, so like I was saying, the cylindrical vessels, which are the ones we're going to start with, um, are going to usually have spherical end cap caps, and that reduces stress in the tank. So I'll write that out for you. Now the reason that these spherical end caps uh, reduce stress in the tank is if you're going to have a failure, um, you're going to have a failure in the body of the, uh, like somewhere you know, like here, it's just going to like bust up. It's not going to bust up on the end um, where you've got this, I drew a triangle, but it's a sphere. Um, the spherical stuff is like the top looks like that. This material here is not going to break. It's going to end up being like the flat piece that you rolled. Um, and we'll show that kind of mathematically here. I don't have a really good way of um, explaining it. I couldn't find any good pictures. So Okay, so let's say you've got yourself this um, cylindrical vessel. All right, and um, it's going to end in a circle. Okay, look at that beautiful circle. All right, and it's a thin walled pressure vessel. Okay, and um, I'm going to go ahead and draw in my um, axis. So I'm going to have myself a, a, a Z and an X. And a Y. Okay, so this here is considered the inner radius. So the radius to here, and then this here is the um, thickness. Oh, I should label my axes Z, Y, and X. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at, um, just so we kind of have that defined, the first thing we're going to look at is the circumferential stress. That's also known as the hoop stress. Okay, so this is a terrible picture, <laughs> but we're going to call this our circumferential hoop stress. Okay, so we specifically are going to look at the inner diameter 
so since the inner radius is what we already had defined, we're now looking at the inner diameter. So that's going to be 2R. So um, that's our internal. And then kind of like this distance right here, that's going to be our thickness. Um, and then if we're looking again at, at how this was, as we, if we were going to take a, a chunk this way, um, the distance of that chunk would be some kind of a delta Y. So um, that's what we're going to do here. So this chunk distance here is going to be our um, delta Y. Okay, so um, kind of what we're looking at is um, we have some stress uh, coming here to toop, to toop, to toop. So if we kind of want to think about this, we can label these as our stress. To toop, to toop, to toop, stress. Okay, and then coming in here, uh, we have the distributed pressure. Okay. So there's two ways to simplify this, um, or not two ways to simplify this, but we can kind of-ish simplify it into two, uh, two rectangles, uh, or I mean, I guess kind of like three rectangles. Okay, so our um, three little chunks, and the chunks that we're looking at are um, the stress, the stress um, on kind of like the top and the bottom. And then the uh, the pressure. Okay. And again, we are just um, I don't know what the word is. Um, we're we're really just kind of um, generalizing it here. Um, but basically, you can um, get this if you made like a bazillion of these little cuts all the way around. You get the same picture, and then by the time you add all the pictures together, it ends up all kind of working out. So. Um, this isn't like a super intense um, calculus version of it, but I think it'll be enough to get you where you want to go to at least kind of understand what's going on. So again, we still have this um, distance here. That's going to be our dy and our thickness. Um, so these distances here are all dy. Um, this is still thickness. And um, this one is going to be uh, to r. Okay, so you could theoretically um, make this cut flat enough to where it would basically be um, a super, super, like a very, very small, I guess what I'm trying to say is um, this distance here from here to here, um, this is approaching zero. So by the time that that approaches zero, um, you can kind of um, imagine that this is just those kind of like three uh, separate things uh, going, going on there. All right, so now if we wanted to sum the forces in this, um, in this direction, um, I guess it'd be the x direction, um, we've got two of the um, areas, T, D, Y, times omega, or uh, sigma 1. And we can say that's going in one direction, and then in the opposite direction, we have the um, area, 2R dy, uh, times P, the pressure. And since it's in static equilibrium, we hope, because it hasn't exploded, then that's going to be equal to zero. So the dy's actually um, cancel out-ish. Uh, that's a very hand-wavy, mathy thing to do. Um, I guess the twos also cancel out. Um, so don't, don't, don't go tell anybody that I told you that you can just cancel out the, the dy's. I mean, they kind of do, but it's complicated. So I've got T sigma 1 minus R um, rho is a, is a 0. And so that does give me um, the circum circumferential um, hoop stress as a R rho over the thickness. Okay? So just like that, R rho over the, um, over the thickness. All right. So that is for the, the hoop stress. Now we specifically want to look at the longitudinal stress. And again, this is the world's um, worst picture. Um, so we're looking at the stress on the end caps. Um, again, we have the, uh, the thickness. Um, and we're going to have all of these uh, sigmas. So this will be sigma 2 coming out. Um, and we also have the pressures that are going kind of on that interior um, and 
wall that we're looking at there. And we still have our radius r. Okay, so um, here we're looking at the sum of the forces kind of along the, the y-axis now because um, we're kind of looking at what's happening right there. Um, the sigmas are circles, so their circumference is 2 pi r. Or the, the area is kind of like the circumference times the thickness. So the circumference times the thickness is a good enough approximation. So 2 pi r t times the omega 2 and then minus the inside of the circle, the area is pi r squared, and that's times rho. And of course, again, that's going to end up um, being, being zero. Let's see, is there anything that cancels out? Yeah, those pi's cancel out. Um, one of the r's cancels out. And so we've got um, from here, we've got two thickness sigma is equal to r rho. And so we have this that is 2 rho over, or r rho over 2t. Now compare that to sigma 1, okay? So the longitudinal stress compared to the circumferential stress, this is actually, so O2, O2, uh, sigma 2 is actually half of the sigma 1. So the longitudinal stress is um, much, 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 much less than the circumferential stress. So the only reason that you're going to make I mean, there's other reasons, but one of the reasons that you're going to make these cylindrical um, pressure vessels is because you just need the volume, but, um, and also for manufacturing, it might be easier, but from a, um, from a material standpoint, the best shape that you could have is a circle, because that means all sides are operating at half of the uh, potential to explode as the, um, the stuff that's made out of cylinders. So... Um, Tanks are always going to rupture along the, um, the long dimension. So again, we talked about cylindrical. I did promise you that we would talk about spherical, but the, um, what do you call it? <laughs> Spoiler alert here is that everything in spherical, it's all longitudinal. All longitudinal stress. Um, so it's all that one half thing. So sigma, uh, rho r over 2 t. So, so that's kind of cool. Um, we are going to ignore radial stress. We're only looking at the, um, at the biaxial stress. So um, we're going to put it all together just to kind of have an idea of everything that we've looked at now. And these will all come into play in the same way. All right, so we have um, stuff that's caused by the normal force. All right, and that's going to be uh, sigma is equal to n over a. And you're going to have stuff that's to do with the shear force, which is going to be uh, tau v q over i t. We've learned so much, it's crazy. Um, then you've got the bending moment. And there's two ways that you can either look at that. It's going to be the sigma is equal to negative m y over i, or you can look at it with the max. It doesn't have the negative sign on it, but it's m c over i. Um, and if you didn't come here for this uh, video for this stuff, that's okay. It's just kind of as a reminder that now all of these kind of come together. You have the torsional moment. So the torsional moment is going to be that tau is equal to t rho over j, or the polar moment. And then you've got the thin, come here, girl, thin walled pressure vessels. And that's going to be the um, rho r over t or the rho r over 2t. And so now it's kind of like you know enough that when you go approach these problems, you're going to be potentially looking at any or even, in, I guess, the worst case scenarios, all of these. So that, that definitely is going to make it super fun.